In this video, we're going to complete example one, and we're going to learn how to simplify thirds. Now, before we get into the example, there's a couple of concepts that we need to discuss. The first concept was discussed in the previous video, and that was if you had two thirds, let's take, for example, root two times root five, you could make them into one third by simply multiplying the two numbers. 2 times 5 is 10, so we can write this as the square root of 10. The second concept we're going to talk about is known as a perfect square. And you'll notice we have a table here. And we've got all the numbers from 1 through to 12, and we're going to square them all. So 1 squared, or 1 times 1, will give us 1. 2 squared, or 2 times 2, will give us 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. And so on. Now these numbers that I've handwritten here are known as perfect squares. And the reason for that is because they were made by squaring a whole number. So we're going to use these two concepts that we've discussed to simplify the thirds in example one. So starting with question A, here we've got the square root of 12. And I'm going to use the first concept, but in reverse. I'm going to split the square root of 12 into two numbers. I'm going to split it into 4 and 3. So root 4 times root 3. I'm allowed to do this because 4 times 3 is 12. Now, some of you might have noticed that one of these two numbers is a perfect square. The 4 is a perfect square. It was made by squaring 2. So why is that useful? Well, when you square root a perfect square, you get a really nice whole number. The square root of 4 is 2. So we can rewrite this as 2 times root 3, and to be honest, we don't need the multiplication symbol. We're going to rewrite this as 2 root 3. We have now simplified the third root 12 into 2 root 3. Now, some of you may be looking at this and going, how is that simplifying? We've taken a single square root, and we've kind of split it into two numbers that have been multiplied together. Well, when we simplify thirds, what we're really focusing on is reducing the number under the radical. So originally we had a 12 under the radical, and we've reduced this to the number 3. So that's the goal here. All right, now moving on to question B. This time we have the number 150 under the radical, and we need to come up with two numbers that multiply to give 150. And the key here is to look at your perfect squares and think to yourself, which one of these numbers divide evenly into 150? And I reckon the number 25 will fit into 150. In fact, I'm going to grab a calculator and I'm going to divide 150 by 25. And I get 6. So 6 times 25 is 150. So let's write that down. The square root of 25 times the square root of 6 is equivalent to the square root of 150. It's really important that I pick one of these perfect squares because when I square root 25, I get a nice whole number of 5. And I also have the square root of 6, which I simply write next to my 5. And you can see we've simplified this because we had a very large number under the square root, and we've been able to reduce it to a much smaller number, to the number 6. Now moving on to question C. We've got the number 1,800. Which one of these perfect squares will divide evenly into 1,800? Well, 100 will, because 100 times 18 will give me 1,800, which is great. Now, the square root of 100 is 10, so we're going to get 10, 
and then the square root of 18 next to it. Now, some people might look at question C and feel that they've simplified this because they've reduced the number under the radical. They've reduced it quite dramatically from 1,800 to 18. But the question is, have we reduced it to the smallest number possible? Could, could we have reduced it to an even smaller number than 18? Well, are there two numbers that multiply to make 18 such that one of them is a perfect square, one of the numbers from up here? Well, 9 goes into 18 twice. So I'm going to rewrite this again, except as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And I'm allowed to do that because 9 times 2 is 18. Now the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 9 as 3. And I'm going to keep this as the square root of 2. Now, 10 times 3 is 30. So we're going to write it as 30 times root 2 or 30 root 2. Notice when we first simplified it, we had an 18 under the radical. And when we simplified it even further, we reduced it to the number 2 under the radical. We have now reduced this third into its simplest form. And the reason we can say simplest form is because the number under the radical is as small as we can possibly get it. Anyway, we will move on to question D now. We've got 3 times the square root of 8. And just focusing on the number under the radical, what two numbers multiply to make 8? And I want one of those numbers to be from my list of perfect squares. So 4 times 2 makes 8. So we're going to rewrite this as 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. We can do this because 4 times 2 is 8. Now the square root of 4 is just 2. So we're going to rewrite this as 3 times 2 times root 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. So this will be 6 root 2. Now looking at question E, we've got 5 times the square root of 80. So looking at this number 80, we're looking for numbers in our list of perfect squares that fit into the number 80. So I'm just going to grab my calculator to help me. I'm just thinking to myself, does 16 fit into 80? Let's try that. 80 divide 16. Um, yes, so 16 times 5 makes 80. So we're going to write this as 5 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And the reason we can do that is because 16 times 5 makes 80. Now the square root of 16 is just 4. So we're going to go 5 times 4 times the square root of 5. Now 5 times 4 is 20. So we're going to have 20 root 5. Alright, now moving on to question F. Under the radical, I have the number 252. So I'm going to use the calculator to help me here, because, because to be perfectly honest, I don't know which perfect square here fits into the number 252. So 252, um, I think I'll divide it by 49. Does not work. Okay. Um, 252 divide 36 is 7. Oh, nice. Okay, so 36 times 7 is 252. The square root of 36 times the square root of 7. And we've got a negative 6 there. So negative 6 multiplied by that. Now the square root of 36 is just 6. So we now have negative 6 times 6 times root 7, and negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. So we will have negative 36 times root 7, so we just write the root 7 next to it. Anyway, that concludes example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.